Hello guys, welcome back to our channel. I'm back with yet another video. This time I'm going to talk about how cloning is done. In this video, I am going to specifically talk about the directional cloning, the process of directional cloning. So stay tuned. To perform directional cloning, we need a target gene that is to be you know cloned and the second one that we need is a plasmid vector then we also need the restriction enzyme that will cut target gene as well as the plasmid and the last one is the DNA ligase that will seal those cut this plasmid has three unique properties one is that it must contain multiple cloning site that is or restriction site. Restriction site is a sick, short, short stretch of sequence in which various uh, various uh, restriction enzyme site are present. That is, in that sequence, various restriction enzyme cut the vector on that place. The second one is it must contain a antibiotic. resistance gene and the third one is it must contain a origin of repli replication here i have mentioned the that it is a directional cloning why it is called the directional cloning we all know that dna dna is double helix and it is like 5 prime to 3 prime direction it has a direction of 5 prime to towards 5 prime to 3 prime it is also here 5 prime to 3 prime 5 prime to 3 prime ORF also is towards the open reading frame that is is towards the 5 prime to 3 prime direction so if we want to insert a target gene we need to insert the target gene towards the this 5 prime to 3 prime direction if the target gene is inserted in like 3 prime to three, uh, 5 prime direction then the purpose will not be solved so we need to insert the target gene towards 5 prime to 3 prime direction and that's why this cloning process is called directional cloning to perform the uh, directional cloning we first take a target gene this target gene is modified in such a way that it contains a eco R1 site and a HIND3 site. Eco R1 and HIND3 is the example of a restriction enzyme. This target, target gene is engineered in such a way that it also contains a antibiotic resistance gene. Let's suppose uh, it contains streptomycin resistance gene. The plasmid that is taken in this process is also contained at one side uh, is also contained uh, eco r1 and hence side okay this eco r1 side recognizes a sequence that is called g a a t t c and hind 3 recognizes a sequence that is called a a g c t t and they are they uh, eco r1 cut in between g and a and hind 3 cut between a and a the cut that they are produced are called staggered cut which means they produce a overhang which is let's say like G A A T T T C and the complementary would be C T T A H G equal one will produce cut over here and here so they will kind of produce like this and this okay so this G C T T A A G and A A T T C G this sequence is easy for ligation so, we get that the target gene has one side equal one, 
sequence and the other side it has hindi 3 sequence and it also contain a streptomycin resistance so when they are digested by both these enzymes they produces at one side this sequence equal one cut sequence and the other side it will produce the hindi 3 sequence also vector contain these two side they the vector also produce these two cut sequence like this if this is a polylinker site that is restriction site and they are digested by these two enzymes the vector will also produce at one side equal one and other side hindi 3 so this side will match with this side and this side will match with this side and so they can easily be ligated I have already talked about that plasmid also contain must contain a antibiotic resistance let's suppose this plasmid contain a G resistance gene that is ampicillin resistance gene so now in this mixture TNA ligase is added DNA ligase so DNA ligase will seal those overhangs DNA ligase will seal those overhangs like if it is a plasmid and eco R1 and hind 3 side and this one is the target gene it also had eco R1 and hind 3 side DNA ligase will simply seal those gaps. Now they are plated on media that contain both streptomycin and ampicillin. The plasmid that contain both the target gene and the vector plasmid will only survive why they will only service because they will they contain both streptomycin and ampicillin resistance gene so they will sur survive and that's how the clone product is screened now let's move to this cutting segment because this one is very important how these cuts are generated suppose this is the target gene okay this is the target gene this is the target gene nucleotide in at one side it has eco r1 sequence that is G A A T T C okay and this one is C T T A A G and this end is contained hence sequence that is A A G C T T T T C G A A when they are digested with eco R1, eco R1 cuts the target gene here. So they will produce a cut over like this. Okay. And when in D3 is when they are digested with hind D3 they will produce a cut over here and here so you will get a portion like this okay so 
this A A T T C N N N N A Okay G N N N N T T C G A is cut out from the target G. This is the hind hindi three sequence and this one is a equal one sequence. Main target gene is cut out like this. So this Z portion is the cut out portion of the target gene. And also what remains is that this G G C T T A A this portion and A G C T T A this portion is actually the portion of the plasmid. So easily this A okay this A G C T T A and this one is G C T T A A. They are easily ligated. And this is the process how directional cloning is done. So if you have any question about this topic, do ask me in the comment section. And if you like this video, do not forget to hit the like button and do subscribe to our channel for more such exciting videos.